we present neural fields with neural fields, visual tactile perception for in-hand manipulation, a system for multimodal object perception with a multi-finger hand. This work is in collaboration with all of these authors across different institutions. First, let's take a sneak peek at the task and some salient results. We have the robot in a known object and attempt to both reconstruct and robustly track it with multimodal sensing. As a teaser, we visualize the input visual tactile stream of RGBED and touch images on the left, the output of the front end, the segmented depth measurements in the middle, and the online rendered surface, along with the reconstructions from marching cubes on the right. We hand the robot this bell pepper object and visualize the gradual reconstruction and robust tracking of it. Our manipulation is carried out by a proprioception driven reinforcement learning policy. The object model is initialized with the first visual frame, and over time, it is completed from visual and tactile depth information. We also overlay the tracked pose of the object on the rendering on the bottom right. We see a similar result from simulation data on this rubber duck object. Our simulation combines the physics of Isaac Jim with the tactile rendering capabilities of Tacto. The rotating visualization on the top right shows how our reconstruction compares against the ground truth. We observe that even with noisy segmentations, we're able to get a cohesive result. Let's zoom out a bit and talk about the high-level motivation of this work. Robotics researchers are not averse to contact anymore. In fact, they embrace it. The community is not just doing pick and place. They're sliding, grasping, pushing, bumping, reorienting, and gating across different objects. A persistent spatial representation is important for manipulation and goal condition policies, such as in-hand rotation. The status quo relies on visual methods for known objects or circumvents the problem entirely via fiducials. In contrast, touch gives us a window into these local interactions. At this point, I'd like to give a quick primer on vision-based touch, such as the gel site or digit sensors. They consist of a tricolor illuminated gel pad with a small camera inside. When we make contact with an object, the elastomer deforms so we can detect contact geometries as images. These affordable, state-of-the-art tactile sensors allow us to handle contact interactions as we would for computer vision problems. General spatial intelligence is vital for robots as they move out of their instrumented labs and factories and begin to cohabit our spaces. For some cases, touch is a nice to have but for others, it may be a necessity. General dexterity can be given to mobile manipulation problems and fine dexterity for tabletop manipulation. Let's now talk about how neural fields works. Similar to classical SLAM, we divide our system into a distinct front end and back end optimizer. The role of the front end is to derive object specific information from raw multimodal streams. First, beginning with visual depth segmentation. We use the segment anything model with so-called embodied prompts. The first one is to use forward kinematics to ignore the fingers, which we add as negative prompts. We then take the centroid of these and ask the model to look between the fingers, assuming that the object is in hand. This gives us a positive prompt. We reason about finger occlusion using the current object model and ignore any occluded prompts. With this information and a history of masks, we can accurately singulate the object without many false positives. Here are some other representative examples on real world data. We now need analogous segmented depth information for the tactile images. So we train our own supervised monocular depth network for this. Our tactile transformer network, which is a VIT, 
can generate both contact depth information and identify contact and non-contact regions, such as in this example, where we are manipulating a cube on the fingers of the object. It is a monocular depth network trained entirely in simulation with TACTO and generalizes to real world interactions. Please look through our manuscript for more details on training and augmentation. The front end outputs are then passed into the back end shape and pose optimizer. We represent the object as a signed distance field or SDF of defined volume with the corresponding pose initialized between the fingers. To supervise this SDF, we sample depth information from each of the sensors. Assuming a perspective camera, we can sample along each ray direction for vision and touch sensors. Periodically, we add these images to a set of keyframes for batch optimization. At each time step, these STF samples are then fed into an instant NGP backbone to train our neural STF volume. Simultaneously, we maintain an object pose graph to update the motion of the neural field. These include the same STF loss, but on SE3 poses instead, a pose regularizer to keep motions well behaved, and a frame to frame ICP constraint. Through this simultaneous optimization, we can start from scratch while tracking and estimating the object model online. We evaluate these over 70 different experiments collected in the real world and in simulation. For object rotation, we train a reinforcement learning policy and simulation that uses just proprioceptive state history to predict the next action. Please look through our manuscript for more details on this. In our first result, we look at reconstructing and tracking novel objects and see the benefits of multimodal perception for this. Qualitatively, here are some final reconstructions overlaid with the track poses. And here are the meshes generated from marching cubes on the neural field for some of the examples. We observe that incorporating touch can lead to two distinct results. The first is in terms of shape completion, where we get more complete reconstructions from incorporating touch information. And we also get more refined surfaces from incorporating local sensing. Adding touch gives us better reconstruction accuracies compared to vision only. The higher, the better in this graph. We also see corresponding trends in pose error, the lower, the better. These trends broadly align in both the simulation and the real world and come back to the chicken and egg problem of SLAM. By extension, there are also far fewer failure modes in estimation with vision and touch compared to just vision alone. For concrete numbers, we show these average mapping and pose metrics. What if we assume that we know the model of the object that we're working with or a tracking with known model problem? Here we can see that we can further reduce the pose errors by half to within two millimeters of accuracy with respect to the ground truth. So far, all the results were using ideal camera configurations for vision achieved by co-designing the problem. However, many manipulation problems are far from ideal due to self-occlusion and occlusion from the environment. In this experiment, we simulate 200 different cameras positioned in a sphere, observing the same rotation trial of a cube. We then run our visual and visual tactile trackers and compare their relative improvements. Color mapped are the improvements that we see from fusing touch, ranging from zero to 20 millimeters in this case. We observe that in negligible occlusion, touch plays more of a refinement role with improvements of up to 6%, 14%, 11%, and 
9%. While in the presence of more heavy occlusion, we can see that it's crucial to disambiguate the problem with gains of up to 65% and 72%. We can also chart these out in terms of a graph of occlusion score versus pose error, where in this case, zero represents full visibility, such as a camera positioned atop the object, and one represents a complete obscurity, such as a camera hidden right below the hand. We can see that there are clear gains in incorporating the local sensing with larger occlusions. This drives home the point that touch at the very least refines and at the very best disambiguates visual estimates during in hand manipulation. We're working towards open sourcing our implementation. Here's an example of the SLAM system running on a mini robot cell. The multimodal dataset, the field site dataset, would be beneficial for those who work on visual tactile tasks. Thank you. Please refer to the manuscript and the website for further details on this work.